Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, JetZero taps North Carolina to host first U.S. factory. Vertical and Bristow offer ready-to-fly service for the VX4 eVTOL. And H55's B23 Energic Tour stops in desert heat. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Jet Zero taps North Carolina to host first U.S. factory. California-based aerospace startup Jet Zero has formally selected Greensboro, North Carolina as the site for its first U.S. factory. This will be used to manufacture the company's all-wing aircraft, the Z-4. The Z-4 was specifically designed to cut fuel consumption using an impressively low-drag and lightweight airframe that claims to be 50 percent more efficient than conventional airliners. This allows it to offer a 5,000 nautical mile range and accommodate 250 passengers. The industry has seen just how promising Jet Zero's design is, with the U.S. Air Force awarding it a $235 million contract in 2023 to fast-track the development of a full-scale Z-4 demonstrator. United Airlines also signed a conditional purchase agreement with the company in April that opens a path to order up to 100 airplanes with an option for an additional 100. The new facility will be on theme for Jet Zero, using the latest and greatest digital tools and artificial intelligence to keep cost and efficiency reasonable. It will be located on the grounds of Piedmont Triad International Airport and create upwards of 14,500 jobs for the region. Once the factory is at full run rate, slated for the late 2030s, it should be able to churn out 20 Z4 jets per month. Construction is set to begin the first half of 2026, allowing deliveries to begin in the early 2030s. After the break, VFS hosting Electric Aircraft Symposium in Oshkosh. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. VFS hosting Electric Aircraft Symposium in Oshkosh. The Vertical Flight Society announced that dozens of the world electric aircraft developers and tech experts will be presenting at the 19th annual Electric Aircraft Symposium, which will be hosted by VFS in Oshkosh on July 19th through 20th, just prior to AirVenture. More than 35 experts will participate in this year's EAS in 12 in-depth moderated discussions that will cover the full range of topics across the entire advanced air mobility industry. Astronautics selected for Radio Windrunner Avionics Astronautics Corporation of America announced the signing of an agreement with Radia to design and develop a complete avionics system solution for the Radio Windrunner cargo aircraft. The Windrunner is the largest aircraft by volume ever built and is designed for large-scale logistics in locales with limited infrastructure. The Windrunner is still under development and will measure 356 feet from nose to end with a cargo bay capacity of 271,922 cubic feet. The Windrunner has 12 times the cargo volume of a Boeing 787. Aero price tag doubles in common stock debut. Aero Group Holdings, a self-described technologically differentiated aerospace and defense company, has officially entered the public markets with an explosive debut. The company priced its IPO at a modest $10 per share, far below its originally marketed range of $14 to $16, and sold 6 million shares to raise $60 million. Just hours later, the stock was trading at $24, up 140 percent, after reaching a peak of $39.07. The offering gives Aero a post-IPO market capitalization of about $270 million based on shares outstanding, though that figure ballooned to around $650 million by the close. 
NASA's Orion readies for Artemis II moon mission. Lockheed Martin announced the completion of assembly and testing of the Orion intended for the Artemis II mission and has transferred the vehicle to the NASA Exploration Ground System, or EGS, team. This is a significant step in NASA's Artemis program as it prepares to launch a crew of four astronauts to the moon for exploration and scientific discovery. It also contributes to the knowledge and experience base for the first crewed mission to Mars. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Vertical and Bristow offer ready-to-fly service for the VX4 eVTOL. Vertical Aerospace recently announced a partnership with Bristow Group to make its eVTOL aircraft, the VX4, a more feasible option for commercial operators. This knocks out the need for customers to track down crews, maintenance, insurance, and infrastructure on a separate bill. The VX4 has a fixed wing with four tilting propellers that allow both vertical and conventional cruise flights. It can hold five, including one pilot, and maintain a cruise speed of around 150 miles per hour for up to 100 miles at a time. The eVTOL is designed for quiet and efficient operation using a lightweight composite construction, high aspect ratio wings, and enclosed propellers. In late May, the startup announced the VX4's successful completion of a piloted wingborne flight. Vertical hopes to push its VX4 into production after certification, slated for 2028, and complete at least 150 deliveries by 2030. The company's latest collaboration takes advantage of this proven platform and Bristow's extensive experience to simplify customers' integration of eVTOL operations. Instead of just shipping the aircraft to customers, the new ready-to-fly model will give buyers access to trained pilots, maintenance services, insurance, and operational infrastructure from the get-go. At the same time, Vertical revealed Bristow's pre-order for up to 50 VX4 aircraft. The deal includes an option to purchase up to 50 more. After these messages, H-55's B-23 Energy Tour stops in desert heat. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. H-55's B-23 Energic Tour stops in desert heat. Swiss electric aircraft developer H-55 completed the fourth stop of its Across America tour, and its Bristol B-23 Energic aircraft demonstrated the reliability of its electric propulsion system in the high heat and low density altitude conditions of the Mojave Desert. The aircraft performed as expected, validating the system's resilience and consistent power output regardless of temperature or elevation. The proprietary battery and energy management system is engineered to deliver peak performance in extreme environments and is at the heart of the B-23 Energix capabilities. Its thermal regulation architecture helps maintain consistent power output and safe operations in elevated temperatures, unlike combustion-based propulsion, which in piston engines degrades in hot temperatures and at high altitudes. The H-55 Flight Ops team performed a series of demo flights with U.S. Air Force test pilots, airline and commercial pilots, flight instructors, and GA pilots from Nevada and neighboring states. The B-23 Energic reportedly performed normally in every flight. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.